Ah, hello. Do you like my picture of a duck? It's not bad, hey? I'm pretty good at drawing, aren't I? I'll tell you why. My father was an artist. But sometimes, not everything is as it seems. And in the blink of an eye, everything can change. Do you like my drawing of a rabbit? And do you know, I can tell you a story where, again, not all was as it seemed. This story comes from my homeland of Norway, where there lived up in the mountains and the snowy climes a farmer and his wife and three children, two daughters and one little boy. Now farming up the side of a snowy mountain isn't very good, and so they were actually rather poor. But they were very happy because they had each other. And Astrid, the oldest daughter, was very beautiful. She also had a wonderful singing voice and could keep her family in good cheer by singing her favourite song. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, when I feel a warm hug, I know i found my home. I'm good at singing, yes. I'll tell you why. My father was a musician. Well, one day there was a tap-tap-tapping at the door, and when the father opened it up, there in front of him was a white polar bear with sharp fangs and huge claws. <laughs> I'm very good at being a bear, aren't I? I'll tell you why. My father was a zookeeper. The bear started asking the father if he could borrow Astrid for a whole year. He had heard her beautiful singing, and in return for looking after her for a year, he would give the father and his wife many, many riches. Well, the father liked the sound of that, but Astrid didn't fancy living with a bear for a whole year. So the father asked the bear to come back on Thursday. After the bear had gone, he sat Astrid on his knee, and he said to her, Astrid, look at our grey shabby walls, look at our rotting wooden floorboards, and how thin your brother and sister and mother and I are. Think, with just your one little sacrifice, you could change all this, how happy you will have made your family. Well, Astrid did love her family, and so she agreed to go. When the bear came back on Thursday, Astrid's mother gave her a brown shawl to wear. And Astrid clung to the thick white fur of the bear as they rode out over the snow and through the blizzard. Astrid hugged the shawl tighter around her shoulders and began to sing her song to keep her warm with thoughts of home. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, when I feel a warm hug, I know I found my home. Soon the bear took her to a cliff, and at the top of that cliff sat a castle. And when the bear took her inside that castle, Astrid's eyes were opened wide at the sight of gold statues and silver suits of armour and jewel-encrusted crowns. The bear brought her a bell and said that if she needed anything, all she had to do was ring and ask. But Astrid still didn't like the bear for taking her away from home for so long. So all she asked for was a room of her own, a good bed, and sweet dreams. That night, Astrid lay in her bed and hugged her covers tight when the door opened. It was so dark, Astrid couldn't see who it was, but she could hear footsteps creeping across the room and sitting down in the chair by her bed. 
Astrid was frozen with fear. Who was it? Who could it be? The fear kept her absolutely paralysed until she fell asleep. And when she was woken by the beams of sun coming through the window in the morning, she turned to look, and the chair was empty. During that day, Astrid rang the bell and called for the bear to bring her plenty of books to read and food to eat, like mushroom stroganoff and a smoked asparagus risotto and pizza with artichokes and three cheeses and a knickerbocker glory with clotted cream ice cream. I know a lot about food, don't I? I'll tell you why. My father was a chef. And at the end of the day, Astrid lay back in her bed and hugged the covers tight. When the door opened. It was so dark, Astrid couldn't see who it was, but she heard footsteps creeping across the floor until someone sat in the chair beside her. Astrid was frozen with fear. Who could it possibly be? Perhaps it was a handsome prince. Or maybe it was an ogre. Or maybe everything was a dream. As Astrid wondered, she slowly drifted off to sleep until she was woken by the light of the morning sun falling on her face. And when she turned to look, the chair was empty. This happened for the next four days. Every night, Astrid would lie in bed, holding the covers tight to her chest, and the door would open. It would be so dark, she wouldn't be able to see who it was, but she heard the footsteps cross the room until someone sat in the chair beside her. Astrid was frozen with fear and wondered if it was a handsome prince or an ogre or whether it were all just a dream. Until the light of the sun woke her in the morning and the chair was empty. On the fourth day, Astrid rang the bell and asked the bear if she could go home and see her family for she missed them terribly. The bear said he would take her on one condition, and that was that she wouldn't give any secrets away to her mother. When Astrid got home on the back of the bear, she could hardly recognise the place. Gone were the grey shabby walls, instead was fine white masonry, and inside the rotting floorboards had been replaced by a plush burgundy carpet, and her brother, her sister, her father and her mother were all looking very well fed. It was clear the bear had kept his promise, but Astrid found it hard to keep her own. And that evening, when she was alone with her mother, Astrid told her a secret. She told her mother about the mysterious figure who had arrived in her room every night. Was it a handsome prince? Was it an ogre? Or had it all just been a dream? Well, her mother had an idea and gave Astrid a candle. She told her to light it in the middle of the night to see if it really was a dream. But she also warned, if it was a prince, she must not drip any of the wax on him because the candle dripped magic wax. Astrid took the candle back with her and that night, when she was back in the bear's castle, she got into her bed and held the covers tight. The door opened. It was so dark she couldn't see who it was, and Astrid was frozen with fear as footsteps moved across the room and sat in the chair beside her. But this time Astrid was so excited she didn't fall asleep, and soon she heard the sound of gentle heavy breathing. As carefully as she could, Astrid picked up the candle and lit it. And she held it up over the chair and saw that it really was a handsome prince sitting there. Astrid gasped, and as she did, a drop of wax landed on the shirt of the prince. The prince awoke! Oh, Astrid, 
What have you done? <laughs> I am very good at being royalty, aren't I? I'll tell you why. My father was a prince. Anyway, where was I? <clears throat> oh, Astrid, what have you done? A troll called Longnose put a spell on me that I must be a bear during the daytime and could only be my princely self during the night. I could only go back to being a prince the whole day long if I could keep a girl in my castle for one whole year without ever seeing me as a prince. But now you have seen me, and you have spilt this magic wax on me. I will have to marry Long Nose the Troll. Astrid was desperately guilty, and she begged and pleaded if there was anything she could do to help. But the prince explained that the castle of Longnose lay east of the sun and west of the moon, and would be impossible to find. And then, as Astrid ran forward to hug hold of him, in a flash, the prince and the bed, and indeed the entire castle, were gone, leaving Astrid all alone in the snow at the top of the side of the cliff.